Hi, good evening. So today we have a very interesting topic. We're going to be talking about new ways of visual culture. And uh, because this is a very important session, uh, because we're going to be talking about responsible fashion and uh, uh, why responsible ways of communication is equally important while we're looking at production. Today we have a very special guest with us. He is the director of Amsterdam Fashion Institute and Dr. Dirk Renders. And uh, Dr. Dirk has his uh, uh, doctorate in visual communications and uh, with a lot of uh, uh, experience and research that he's done while serving as a director of Amsterdam Fashion Institute within the fashion realm, we're going to be talking to him today and I really look forward to having a very enriching chat because I am keen on knowing what are these new ways going to be like. Uh, it's good to see a lot of our uh, guests have already arrived, a lot of students, our stakeholders, um, even their parents here. Yeah. So I am going to be now taking in here yeah, Dr. Dirk. So I'm going to call him Dirk because he doesn't, I'm sure that he loves being called by his first name. And this is a part of the Responsible Fashion series. Here I am going to look at any uh, request. So Dirk, if you're there, you can send me a request. I'm going to accept your request and that's how you're going to be inside the chat with me. Okay, so uh, what would visual culture mean? Uh, I'm just going to send him a message saying that I'm waiting for him. For him. Uh, I'm sure uh, that we're going to have him soon with us. As we know that we initiated the Responsible Fashion Series here in uh, at Arch, um, Jaipur, and uh, this was a part of the Fashion Colloquium uh, series, and this was the opening of the third series, in fact. And now, coming up next is the one at Antwerp, and Dirk, myself, we are both on the scientific committee, and. Uh, the call of contributions is already open and the research paper, the paper submissions have already been done, but there are other contributions that are possible. So I'm sure you can still send your entries. Okay. Yes, so we have his request here with us. Hi, Dirk. Hi. Hi, Ashana. Welcome. Yeah, thank Welcome you so much. Welcome back to Jaipur. Oh, I'm missing it so much. So, yes. Uh... <laughs> A lot of fond memories of the Jaipur Literature mm -hmm. Festival and the Rambagh Palace and uh, the, the being with the writers and a lot of visual delight, yeah. in fact, you know, for a person like you, uh, you know, for you, I think this was, that was your first visit to India, in fact. Yeah, it was my first. Yeah, it was my first visit visit to India, and I fell in love with the country. So I definitely want to come back as soon as it's possible to travel, of course. So um, yeah, so it's on my bucket list to 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 come again to uh, to Jaipur and to visit also the other cities in in India. Since you're heading the academic, uh, you know, committee at the IFTI as well. So I'm sure that uh, soon you're going to be with us in October. And uh, we're really looking forward to chat with you more in terms of what you have, in terms of what COVID has, after COVID, what are the new ways of visual culture? Because you have your deep research that you've done within this realm. 
So I'm very keen to hear your views uh, on what, because the topic was suggested by you. So I'm sure you have some very interesting uh, uh, things to share today. So today, uh, you know, so my question is that what is uh, visual culture in today's uh, context? While we all yeah. understand that visual culture has been very important in terms of study and um, learning and observation, these things are there. But today, yeah. what could that really mean? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a really important question, especially in the 21st century. And the fact that we're living in a media yeah, centered uh, society. So what is visual culture is, of course, a very broad word. So for me, visual culture is everything that is seen, that is produced to be seen and in the way it's seen and understood. So um, I think it's really interesting to to discuss it and to also criticize it because there are so many things happening at the moment on Instagram, on Facebook, but also in media, in magazines, also in film, fashion films, but also within photography. So it's the part of a culture that communicates through visuals. And I think that's really important nowadays that everyone is really focused on telling stories, not by words, but using images. Mm -hmm. And the visual communication is uh, also nowadays so important also for students, but also for professionals that we really have to like sort of redefine what does visual culture mean nowadays. And I also want to make a reference to one of my favorite authors and his name is Nicholas Misuev. Mm -hmm. He's also teaching at the NYU in New York and uh, his definition is perhaps best understood as a tactic of studying the functions of a world addressed through pictures, images, and visualizations. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really the essence that our world is now best understood by using images and not text and words. So I think mm -hmm. that's also really important. And also mm -hmm. the fact within the 21st century interaction is also really important because we are all participants in visual culture. It's not just a part of your everyday life. It is your everyday life. And I think that's also really important. And mm -hmm. when you look at like, all those trends happening in our society, you could say that it's also a growing interdisciplinary field of study which emerged out of anthropology, art history, philosophy, and many other disciplines that focus on visual objects or the way images are created and used within our society. So, um, yeah, like a, a broad Sorry. definition, what it means, visual culture. Or, um, You're so right when you, uh, you know, because with the digital medium and the social media becoming so much uh, a way of communication today. Uh, I think uh, it has been a boon for us. So I think it's very important to look at uh, what kind of imagery, what kind of visuals are, you know, conveying and how we're actually looking at uh, sending a message across. So um, not realizing that uh, um, I think a lot of people probably realize and a lot probably don't even realize how powerful a tool it is. And uh, um, I think uh, I, I'd like to hear your views on a couple of uh, things that one needs to be more sensitive about when one is talking about, you know, having an evolved visual culture that can, you know, um, probably create uh, a better world. And some insights yeah. that you have on those. Yeah. yeah, I think the dominance of image within visual culture is really concerned at the moment. Uh, with visuals, visual events, information, but our meaning and also visual pleasure is set by the consumer and sort of interface with the uh, technology. As we understand that, you know, I mean, the digital medium, the social, uh, you know, media has opened so much of uh, visual delight that is there. So, you know, what are the areas that, uh, you know, one uh, should be sensitive about when one is looking at visual medium as a 
tool to communicate there's some something that has occurred to you which might be relevant for people to know because at times we do a lot of things mindlessly not understanding that what impact it could have in the long run oh that's a really interesting question i think um the fact that the importance of visual of pop culture is in i can say that uh, you can sense that the role that culture playing and within pop culture also the visual are really important they are be- are becoming like new ways of art so that's one thing the avant-garde of the artistic elements of visual culture within pop culture so uh, visual culture is like a reflection of things that are happening now as in society and you see like a shift like before in the in the 20th century you could see that like art high art reflecting on society but now it's shifting toward pop culture reflecting on themes that are really important nowadays so i think also the trends that you can see within pop culture are really emphasizing first um it's like one part on of course the themes that are relevant to society but they are also reflecting like two ways of storytelling that's what you're also are envisioning that new trends are really upcoming and coming from pop culture and also the great is really also visible and also durable when you watch visual culture and also the, the fact that people don't want to read anymore they just want to see images so the the role of images is also really important because communicating through images so the way that images are created and the decoding that are uh, take place uh, gives opportunities for um media companies but also brand uh to tell their story but they also have like because everything nowadays is communicated through images so they can also post ideology on the the audience using um all those visual and and i think that's also like a sort of our our visual culture that all those images has they seem to have something objective but all the subjective side also really present because every image is created by an artist or a designer and every designer or an artist wants to tell their story and they are using their objective within the images so in that sense like it that means that every image is subjective but also objective so i think that paradox is very at the moment dark i mean your voice is i have to really you know pay hard attention to what you're speaking because from is it possible to get a better voice quality yeah I'm, yeah I'm yeah, yeah that my, was good that was good that was good when uh, i just said oh okay maybe i have to get i have to keep uh, maybe it's a little bit closer so that's possible is it better like this yes i get oh. it remains a bit static then it probably it's much better yeah okay perfect yeah 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 thank you thank you so much now now it sounds better so just tell me because um, yes i think everybody understands this and uh, uh, but when we talk about new ways of visual culture what do you mean by that new ways of visual culture is that we are like we see like emerging uh of popular and low culture media applications so you can see that like interdisciplinary but also hybrid forms of of media are being created that you can see like a sort of a mixture of several media together like let's say photography and film when you watch uh, an image you can ask yourself is this a photo or is this a film so you can see that those mediums are coming together and that we are not talking about high forms of communication because we're not communicating only by a photo or only by a film we're using like the characteristics of several media at the same time because every day we're being yeah sort of 
triggered by 8,000 images every day. So all the producers, artists are like searching ways to attract the attention of every viewer. So that's why they're using several characteristics of several media to trigger and, and to, yeah, to uh, emphasize the importance of their story. Right. And uh, I'm sure because uh, while we're talking about there's certain paradoxes as well. So would you like yeah. to share your views on, the, on those? I, th I think it's really interesting also to analyze those pictures, to analyze them like objectively, like what do we see, what can we describe, but also to uh, analyze it from a subjective part, like also that we sort of investigate or do research uh, on the meaning, what the intention was of the artists to, to communicate. And that gives like very interesting insights. Um, so I think that paradox is really relevant and also fascinating to analyze, to see how people are communicating, artists or photographers, um, although they're using objective ingredients in their image, but still it's subjective. And the, the subjective side gives like a sort of a vision that that artist has on society. Right. So, you know, I mean, there's a lot of storytelling uh, that is now, right now, in, in focus, you know. I mean, whether you are creating a product or a service, I think... Uh, it, the essence of storytelling has become very key in terms of how you actually presenting your idea to your, you know, your consumer or your stakeholders or whatever. So what do you feel about, uh, because uh, yes, storytelling was always there. I think when you look at India, we are largely an oral culture and uh, a lot of storytelling has actually nurtured the way we are. And, and we may be very proud of our storytelling, I think. Whereas in the Western world, we see there's a lot of documentation, yeah? And we do find there are a lot of, in, you know, uh, uh, scriptures and things which do have a lot of visual um, um, imagery which is there and communication that is done through um, visual narratives also. So, you know, while we're talking about storytelling, which is completely in contrast to uh, the visual narratives, so how do you look at both of them? Um, you can approach them from like an anthropologistic point of view. Like, uh, of course, several cultures, they tell different stories. And uh, I think also the intercultural experience is really important when you talk about storytelling. Also, maybe we have to talk nowadays on a global society and not Western or Eastern society, because I think we can learn from each other. And also the mixture of uh, several elements can be very enriching to tell a story. So, uh, so tell us something that is very key when, the, when we look at storytelling from a visual communication perspective uh, in the new, uh, you know, in the new way that we are wanting to establish or understand yeah, I think uh, nowadays visual culture also means uh, creating experiences. People don't want to just look to an image or to a screen. They want to interact. So you can also see that many commercials has like an interactive element that people have to go online to Instagram, use the QR code, for example, to scan something. So we're seeing that breaking the fourth wall with the audience is really important. People don't want to just sit and watch an image. No, they want to be part of the story being told. So uh, that's really happening at the moment. That also like the physical and the digital part are coming together. So the fact that people are participating in that digital world, but they also want to have like that physical component. And I think that's a very like um, the essence of visual culture nowadays that everything is about experiences, creating experiences. Very important. You talk about experience and engagement, which is very critical in terms of communications today. So uh, while we're talking about these two, do you still see that, uh, you know, is this that's avant-garde or there is something else that's, that's avant-garde in the visual 
culture. Yeah, what avant-garde is is that the in contemporary visual culture, the critical element is really present. We are very critical towards society, and you see that new ways of storytelling, and that's what I also mean with avant-garde is like that we create uh, images that question society, question society on the content, but also question the way we tell stories today. That also the experimental element is really important. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I love this uh, bit of being experimental in terms of uh, storytelling where visuals could do the narration, right? So uh, tell, tell me some example that, uh, you know, that's very popular and people can con relate with it. That's around us that we see. So uh, because I think what you're saying uh, seems very simple, but it could be very complex, you know, in terms of uh, when we're looking at manifesting it. Yeah, manifesting or creating it. I think it's complicated or like uh, to make images nowadays because the audience is so demanding so you can't just make an image you have to really think it over and make something that it's appealing to the audience and also that it's uh, linked with the stories they want to hear so mm -hmm. that's a challenge but that challenge uh, also means that people are going always a next step in finding a new way of combining images, defining new stories. Um, so I think that's really interesting. And that means of, that like the things happening nowadays, using creative technology, for example, within images, also the fact that the, the boundaries between um, high art and low art are like collapsing because everything is coming together. That means that um, the 21st century has exciting examples uh, of visual culture. And that's why, for example, fashion brands are now making fashion films today. They're using elements from music videos, commercials, um, films to, to communicate to the audience because everyone nowadays is looking for a way to escape society or escape realism. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, and that's why I was also referring to the, uh, breaking down the fourth wall. So if you want to um, experience that image the fullest, then you must become part of the story world that they're mm. Very interesting you brought in the fashion perspective because you serving as the director of one of the premier uh, you know, fashion schools in Europe and across the globe. I'm sure, you know, because there's a lot of research level um, and the depth at which uh, Amphi works. I've been to Amphi, so I know the level and the quality of, uh, um, you know, the input and the output, both from the academic and the students is very intense and uh, you're working very, uh, you know, towards it. So uh, from the fashion perspective, I know uh, well, fashion has a great role to play in terms of, uh, you know, talking about identity or, you know, they are the, the fashion uh, community is the creative community in the sense they are the ones who actually take the step forward, right? Mm -hmm. And they are the ones who are actually breaking the stereotypes, right? So when you look at uh, how would you, uh, from the fashion perspective, I would like to know that while this uh, dialogue is all about the responsible fashion uh, dialogue series, um, I would like to know from you that what are the areas that one um, could really look upon when because uh, when we're talking about being responsible uh, in the fashion world, because earlier uh, being responsible is now has been looked at that, you know, you, you know, your production goes into the right uh, places. There is consumption, which is appropriate right in the supply yeah. chain, the value chain. There are people who are more conscious about what they're doing. Now, uh, this is what has been largely understood as responsible fashion. But you, when you're talking about a visual culture, I think there's a greater responsibility that the fashion industry needs to take on. So what is your, your view on that bit? Yeah, that's uh, that we also have to de redefine what communication means in, f in fashion, for example. I think that's really important. And from a sustainability perspective, also 
that's an extra tool and element and also a criteria when you communicate about fashion that the sustainability or this, uh, and also the ethical part is really important. So uh, referring to postmodern culture or the consumer society, I think that also fashion education has like a emancipatory um, role to educate the industry, but also young students that the stories that they're telling also uh, must reflect the needs of society, like referring to diversity and inclusivity, but also sustainability, for example. So if you are talking from a responsible fashion, that also the way you communicate uh, is really important. The stories you're telling, but also the medium that you're using. So also the fact that we're, uh, the creative technology is really important. So also that you have to use digital communication um, also to address, of course, your, uh, your audience. Right. So, uh, um, interesting. I think uh, it's an uh, opportunity for us to explore more and more. That's what you mean to say that you, there is, uh, we need to experiment what works, what doesn't work. Yeah, uh, like, using, like using virtual reality, artificial intelligence, XR, um, all those new technologies are, can be used in a sustainable way to, uh, to communicate and also to make images. True. When you're looking at, uh, when, when one looks at digital fashion completely, I think it's a whole uh, new culture within the fashion industry that would evolve. I mean, are people are putting in green screens and getting their clothes, getting different prints on them. And I think, uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of softwares like Clo and other ones, you know, who are bringing in that kind of, uh, you know, innovation possible for people. Uh, where do you see digital fashion really going when we truly talk about fashion? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's going to be still a combination between physical and digital. So I think okay. Because people are still wearing clothes, so, uh, uh, so the physical part is still really important but the, the opportunities that the digital will give to the also the physical part are enormous and i, I think i really believe that we're still in the beginning uh, of all those opportunities and also possibilities to, to design and also to communicate about fashion because you can see that all the other uh, creative uh, programs in the world looking like how can we use digitization on the one hand but also the physical part on the other hand to um, uh, yeah to make new stories and to make new visuals so um, uh, Doug we've been talking about you know having uh, your students come over and do an internship with the, the industry year and uh, while we also have um, you know with Annika, I was exploring the fashion management program and, you know, students going to different countries and doing it. So, yes, we are partnering for that as well. Yes, you're so right that, you know, uh, the real experience cannot uh, uh, substitute the digital experience uh, or, the, or the digital cannot substitute the real experience. So what is that you look forward to when you're looking at, uh, you know, what our, because India is a very different, different uh, world in uh, in terms of the visual culture. So how does it appeal to you? What occurs to you when you think of any kind of collaboration yeah. where what this culture can offer to a student who is in the West and what the Western culture or the digital culture, the AI, the AR, the VR, that can bring for the students who are coming from this part of the world. So what are the strengths that you see on either side? Yes, it. I would like to get a couple of specifics that are coming to your mind. Yeah, maybe we can make a link to what Ton Florison in the chat is saying. I think we're moving from storytelling to story perception. And I think that's so right. And also the story perception is also linked uh, from my point of view with the experiences that we're not just telling it, but also the perception is really important because people becoming part of the story world. This also using the senses are really important. 
and also storytelling, but that's, and then when you look, link it with story perception, then you can also make a link with story doing that mm -hmm. people are just participating within the story. So that's really interesting. So Tom, I, I think that's a good remark that you just mentioned. So very profound, you know, so you've touched upon that experience. Uh, however, we want to bring it to AI it can be never uh, replaced by the real experience of going and experiencing that. How may, so I just say that, you know, in this, you've seen everything of India uh, in films, you've seen them on television, but your experience of being in Jaipur was completely something that touched you, right? So tell me how, when you looked at India before, um, you know, on the screen, and when you looked at India, what was that to, to, at least point out two significant things that occurred to you completely different in terms of an experience where your senses were. Um, yeah, I think that's um, like from an Indian visual culture, they pressure, pressures their, their art history much mm -hmm. more than we do at the moment, I think in the, in the Western culture. So that's what I also experienced being there, that um, the, the history and also the art history is a really important part of uh, the society of today. And I think that we can learn from that. That um, I think that's really important that we precious the history and also the art and the visual culture and that we l learn from it. I'm not saying we're not doing this in the, in the Western culture, but you can still see that, for example, in Indian visual culture, it's 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 still there. It's it's prominence uh, also in the fashion and also in the architecture, for example. So we can learn from that. Oh, so, that's interesting. Yeah. And uh, oh. so, uh, tell me something that really triggered your senses when you were here. Uh, some some memory that you have with you. Of course, the very, uh, um, yeah, all the, the bright colors, uh, the nature, uh, also the amazing um, city castles in Jaipur, for example, but also uh, the cuisine. Uh, it's uh, So I think it's very special and also very nice. Uh, the, the Indian food, I think it's, it's really... Um, yeah, that was one of my biggest memories to to taste uh, Indian culture. So uh... interesting. So uh, you know when you use the word taste, taste is the word taste is used in so many different contexts, right? And um, so when you you an experience is a taste, uh, uh, you know you uh, you know the taste is the real taste. And uh, being in a particular space is, uh, with a particular taste. So, you know, when you use the word taste, uh, you know, it's, it's a whole uh, different visual culture that opened up for me. So, uh, very interesting uh, uh, context uh, and the perception that you brought today. I'm sure that our um, audience has, uh, um, you know, moved one notch up in terms of their understanding of um, what these both cultures bring in, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, making the best. So how are yeah. things in Amsterdam and uh, in Belgium I'm, where you stay? I'm at, the, I'm in, at the moment I'm in Belgium because okay. of the corona uh, uh, restrictions. So uh, okay. I'm, yes, yeah, maybe I can say like some final words that uh, I think it's really interesting that, that you are also organizing the, those uh, Instagram uh, live presentations and that we can bring like the entire world together, like at the same moment. So um, mm -hmm. um, I, there's one question and that's from Tom. So what is culture? That's a, is that a question for me, Tom? What culture is? Yeah, so, probably. So you saying, uh, I, you asking me what is culture? Yeah, maybe what is culture for you? And then I, I can also ask, because there's one question in the chat. Oh, there are a couple of ones, yeah. What is culture? So yes, yeah. please do. Uh, no for your geest. What does that mean? I, I don't know. I don't know either, but 
But maybe you can ask it. Like, what is culture for you, uh, Akhana? See, for me, culture is something that is that comes from tradition, and it has stayed on because it has a deeper meaning. And it the meaning is more to do with one, but it has it's more inclusive. It's more something that people want to accept and build upon. and something that they can connect and relate with and it grows over centuries you know over decades and yeah. and it becomes a part of a life and it is not something that you have to memorize or make an effort it is something that you live daily and that's how that's how culture occurs to me yeah i think that's a good description and maybe we can add like elements of um identity to it i think yes. uh, culture is also linked with identity because yes. people can define culture from their uh pierre bourdieu is, uh, is is referring to the capitals that people have um so that the social cultural and also the linguistic elements are really defining what culture means and i think that's for everyone different and someone is saying culture described describes the history and i think that's where it starts because you're growing from a constructivistic uh, point of view you're building on culture with all your experiences uh, yeah, so so right it, it does start from a past it uh, yeah. it is there in the present and it has meaning for a future so if it didn't have any meaning it would not stay on with us so a culture definitely has a very deep rooted meaning attached to it so that meaning yeah. is what we need to constantly reflect upon and see that how diff- at different time periods why people and how this actually existed and why did it have that meaning so meaning definitely would evolve but uh, the context would change but yes uh, the history could be in the form you know the linguist you know there would be sculpture there would be i mean there would be architecture there could be paintings you know, you know there could be your costumes you know everything actually imbibes culture in its in its totality so i think culture definitely has a great inspiration to look up you know it brings great inspiration for all of us so mm-hmm. somebody is saying why is fashion important to culture fashion important to culture because again fashion would only adopt those things where there is something that you know uh, is aspirational because fashion is all about a future aspiration so if the, if a culture does not bring in that aspiration because we have not been in that part of the world when the culture actually evolved so you know everybody is distinguishing themselves uh, you know how that culture actually uh, comes to them so it's not about how people in the past took it but how we are actually imbibing that culture so i think every for everybody it's a journey of revisiting understanding the culture and taking it to the future so that's yeah. what i understand as culture so yeah, uh, so culture is all about safety but we are less safe these days i think we were never safe whether it was in the prehistoric area we had the jungles the forest we were most unsafe and i think we are in the safest times right now but yes this but we always need to understand that you know there is a place for everybody on the planet and i think the human race has been very self centered and they have been only thinking about their safety and when we talk about safety i think uh, it's the virus who is looking for safety and they found us uh, their safety zones so you know i mean when i see it's a very uh, i think uh there are different kind of organisms on the planet right uh, so we call them with five senses three two one and make just one sense so there are this planet is for organisms of all these kind of senses so i think there has to be some kind of a balance that we need to understand as human race and build our uh, strength that can support us and we somewhere have not done that i think we've not worked enough on our immunity and that's why we are facing the attack of it mhm so I, I, that's when i feel that you know we were always unsafe everybody is unsafe and we are still very safe so a human race has 
evolved with so much of technology understanding uh, you know we've created so much wealth for ourselves products services and yet we feel that we are not safe so i think there's a time that we need to alter our mindset too in terms of looking at what safety means yeah i think i think we all have to work yep. to what yeah. that safety is because yeah. everyone wants of wants to feel safe i think that's really important yep yeah 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 and um, um very true so i think uh, there's a good discussion that has happened at the end of the session um, yeah definitely uh, yep so anything else that you want to share dirk i'm really glad that you made it possible and uh, there's somebody who has to say that technology itself is making us unsafe so yes uh, when yeah. we are not very uh, 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 you know uh, used to a certain thing or a certain way of life we feel unsafe insecure and unsafe so i think it's again uh, in our minds i think when we start embracing things when we start seeing things from inclusivity i think uh, the whole unsafe thing will never come across to us it's more like you know uh, uh, we staying in a quantum quantum world where each one of us uh, connected with the other you know at the level of the cell we are connected with each other so i think um, that whole uh, essence is very very important for us and i think somewhere uh, commercial and industrialization has somewhere made us very selfish and uh, we have forgotten to see the true interest of mankind so and i think it's all about continents and uh, countries and cultures who are trying to thrive and not the others so i think yeah. uh, there is this game of uh, power that is making us unsafe rather than uh, the planet itself so the planet will always keep making these changes uh, and i think we need to adjust to the um... yeah but i think it also has to do something with the fact that there's so much possibilities with technology and that we're not knowing exactly what all those possibilities are we're just um, yeah in the beginning of using creative technology in our in our lives so and i think that's also makes people feel unsafe because they don't know exactly what is possible using it in their daily life so so i think anything used in moderation keeps you safe and the moment we uh, uh, we don't use it in moderation probably that's the unsafe environment we push ourselves into so whether it's anything for that matter you know mm -hmm. uh, it could be as good as you know you can't have loads of milk every day yeah so uh, even if that also you have to drink in moderation so yeah. however good it might be for your body so i think uh, it's very important to understand what moderation means and i Definitely. think everyone has to explore that uh, frontier yeah. and that yeah. make things a lot clear to us so yes uh, uh, with visual culture we have here on a visual platform and that has made it possible for dirk and me to communicate and talk about something more meaningful and i think this is getting the world closer so look at what technology can do it's bringing us so yeah. much closer to each other yeah, we did yeah. have the instagram people were doing chats but the amount of chats we are doing now is that we now feeling okay that's the only way because we are not able to connect that way so yeah. i think it's a great opportunity that we've made out of uh, the technology that's available to us yeah, and let's definitely. continue doing that um uh so interesting the person saying that feeling unsafe can trigger a journey mm -hmm. that's interesting too so yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right uh, yes. so uh, who's uh, i who's ton florison uh, is he known to you uh, yes I, he's a former colleague of mine so <laughs> oh nice 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 to have him here mm -hmm. yes okay yeah. thank you thank you all right thank you akhana Thank you Dirk for taking out the time to be with us. Yeah. Okay, so thank you so much for joining us today. So it's very important that uh, we understand the importance of visual culture and how uh, the social media to our digital platforms have made uh, you know all this possible that today our visual cultures can reach out to other na you know nations through the technologies that we have and uh, there's a lot of storytelling that can happen with our with the visuals that we have you know that we've uh, collected memories that we've collected all these years so let's explore experiment and continually feel more and more safe and that's what is the need of the art 
and the more we feel safe within i think we'll be more defended uh, you know from the outside challenges and yes uh, keep safe because all of us need to maintain that we wear our mask we use our sanitizers i think this has become such a popular tagline of the year it's become a part of our culture now so uh, we are hopeful that uh, we're going to connect with each other soon in real time uh, meeting again in conferences meeting over you know uh, travel doing projects together we are all looking forward to that kind of thing but yes uh, we are enjoying this communication that's been possible so thank you and um, we look forward to have another session while the earlier previous ones i had with professor ian king uh, who is um, a professor in research and management and has served for more than two decades at the london college of fashion and uh, initiated the fashion colloquium and last year we initiated the responsible fashion series it was a five day event we did a chat on heritage stories of change uh, at the jaipur literature festival and we did a grand show on khadi at the amir fort so these are great memories and then came covid and it struck so be before covid when we had 250 delegates we had uh, you know 15 countries representing at the arch campus we had more than 80 speakers speak in 3 days with field trips and things you know that's still in the memory you could hear the talking about it right so we had professor anik scrammy last time and we talked about what would creativity be like uh, in this new normal can creativity save the planet can fashion save the planet so yes uh, ken robinson did say that you know as literacy is important to all of us and we've given it a lot of importance right today we need to give the same recognition to creativity how important it is to ensure that we are create ongoingly creative and especially after covid creativity will be the key thing for sustainable growth and that's where i leave you with this whole thought and yes uh, at arch college of design and business we are constant constantly striving to make sure that we bring meaningful conversations for you conversations that can elevate us conversations that can enlighten us conversations that will take us one notch a higher in terms of our understanding right while the world is full of information you know you know uh, we want that knowledge is something that can you know make a difference to mankind and this is the time when all the knowledge that we have should come together to make a better and a safe world for all of us so have a nice evening and a great weekend we look forward to connect with you again next month on responsible fashion